Hello everyone, in this video I'm going to show you how to provision your ESP32 device with Wi-Fi credentials over BLE using the off-the-shelf Espresso application for this on your iPhone or Android while maintaining the Arduino coding style. And to do this, uh, at Deploy the Fleet we have created a sample project uh, here on GitHub that I will link in this video that has everything that you need to get started. Uh, this turned out to be non-trivial you cannot do it out of the box in the Arduino RDE without some serious hacks. It's quite difficult in platform IO as well if you're not an expert there. And so I just wanted to create this starter project to get you up and going to see how you can provision using BLE uh, while still maintaining your Arduino project style. And so let's just jump right into it. <clears throat> okay, so a couple of things. Let's talk about prerequisites on this. This video is for Linux specifically. Uh, it can work on Mac, but I'll have a separate video for Windows and Mac that will cover that. Um, but Linux supports Docker natively, and it's actually very handy and helps you get up and going much faster than on the other platforms. And so the only prerequisites for using this project are to have Docker installed, VS Code installed with the Dev Containers extension. That's it. You actually don't even need to have ESP IDF installed natively on your machine. All of that's taken care of in Docker. And so the first thing that you're going to want to do is clone the repo, which I have already done. It can actually take a while because it uses the Arduino uh, ESP32 library as a component, and it's huge. They have all their docs and images and things in there. And so as we use that as a sub-module in this project, and so it's uh, quite a big project to clone. Uh, so I've already done that, so we don't waste time here in the video. You'll want to clone the project. And then uh, let's look through here on the prerequisite side. If I come to extensions, you'll see that I have the dev containers extension installed from Microsoft. That is a prerequisite for this to work. And that's it. Let's take a look through, <clears throat> first of all, some of the magic of this is in the dev container folder, we have a Docker file which creates our entire Espresso ESP IDF environment for us. There's nothing really that you need to concern yourself with there. It's just an FYI. And uh, one thing in this dev container.json I will cover here in a second. So I've just opened this project normally in VS Code and I am just going to be using a dev kit. What is this? Pico, Pico dev kit M2. So any ESP32 dev kit. Uh, will work for this or any other device that you have. Custom device should work just fine. But the one thing that we need to note is that we are going to mount this into our Docker container. And that is in this dev container JSON, we have specified a device path. Now, most of these dev boards will enumerate as dev TTY USB zero, as we've listed here. If yours does not, the container will fail to start. And so all you need to do is figure out on Linux, what your board is enumerating as, as a um, dev path, and you can change this line 33 right here, um, and everything else will just work. And let me show you that. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna plug this in <clears throat> to USB, and then what I'm gonna do is there's a couple of ways you can get to this. You can click on this little green double arrow down here, and if you type uh, reopen, you get this option, reopen in container. This is just the command palette. You can also open that by doing control shift P. Same thing, you're gonna type reopen and you get, you get this option, reopen in container. And otherwise you can come up to the view command palette option here. And we're just gonna, again, it's that same, that's just three different ways to get to the same command palette. So dev containers, reopen in container. And I'm going to click this. The very first time you do this, there will be a, a setup where it's got a pool Docker images and set everything up should just take a couple of minutes. That's a one time hit. Uh, I've done this before, so I won't have that long delay. And what this does is it reopens your VS code and you're now developing within a Docker container. Again, I do not have ESP IDF installed on my local machine at all. It's just installed in the container. And a reason I like this is because if I'm working in different versions of IDF, 5.0, 4.4.4, something. I don't need to worry about managing that on my local machine. I can just have a Docker environment set up for that. And again, because of this entry in dev container JSON, my device uh, is this line right here. My device is actually hooked into that container as well. This works perfectly on Linux. So you're ready to program and everything. 
So great. Let's do a quick uh, tour of the code. There is not a lot going on here. Uh, over here, we have the components directory uh, and it has Arduino. I've already set that all up. This is using the official Arduino ESP32 library as a component. This is the recommended way to do any sort of project where you have to change the SDK config for your ESP32. So that's how we get our Arduino-ness. And then uh, we have a main folder here, which has our main.cpp, and this is our code. And if we look at this, it's less than 100 lines of code, not much going on. We have a sysprov event up here. This is just a callback that the provisioning, the Wi-Fi provisioning component makes. And you can, you can look through this. We won't go through it line by line to show you the different points that you can get information about the provisioning process. I have added... A, a boolean is provisioned equals false right as the program starts up and you can see i set that to true under this event wi-fi sta got ip so when we've gotten an ip address from a router we can assume that we're provisioned and so we set is provisioned to true now if we scroll down here this should all look perfectly familiar it is arduino like you're used to it's got a setup and a loop function in the setup we are just doing our serial begin as we normally would. This is what wires up that callback function that we just looked at above. And then this is the magic, Wi-Fi prov.begin provision. And you're not gonna wanna mess with any of these arguments here. Uh, the first one is what makes it BLE instead of what you may be familiar with, which is soft AP. Um, and then the last two are the two that you can change. This is the proof of possession pin, which you'll see us use later in the app. and prov underscore DTF is the service name that you'll also see within the app is how our device will enumerate. And so feel free to change those to suit your needs. And then down here we have our loop. And so we're going to say if it is provisioned, we're going to just print out connected to Wi-Fi and ready to run the main application. We'll do that every five seconds. If it's not provisioned and the device is waiting for credentials, uh, we'll come down into this else and we'll say waiting for Wi-Fi credentials, open app to get started. And again, I have this, both of these with replace this with your code, whatever you want to do while you're waiting. Maybe you want to flash an LED or give some indication on a screen that you're waiting for credentials. Uh, and then again, after it's provisioned, this now under here is provisioned, turns into your normal standard Arduino loop function, reading sensors, uh, activating actuators, things like that. And so that is it. That's all there is to the code. What I will do here is I'm in a terminal. Again, I'm in a Docker container. I'm, going, I'm just going to do an idf.py flash. Actually, you know what I'm going to do first? I'm going to do an ESP tool. And this is what's great about being Docker. All these tools are built in. I have them right here at the command line. I don't have to set anything up. And I'm going to do erase flash just to make sure I'm in a perfectly clean state. It's going to connect to my device, my dev kit, Pico dev kit. And now I'm going to do an idf.py flash monitor. That's going to program, and then we'll see some output. OK, and while that's coming up, I'm going to switch the view here to show you the app that we're going to be using. OK, so you can see as it boots up here, it's going to say waiting for Wi-Fi credentials, open app to get started, open app to get started. And so I have opened, this is the standard, you can download it from the App Store uh, and the Google Play Store. It's available on both Apple and Android. And it's the ESP provisioning BLE app. And as you can see here, I'm just going to click provision device. Now it wants to look for a QR code. We don't have that feature enabled, so I'm just gonna click on I don't have a QR code down here at the bottom. Now it's gonna search for devices. Now one thing to note, at the very top here where it says prefix prov underscore, it's gonna look only for devices that start with that prefix. Again, up here in our code, if you change that, you'll have to change the prefix in the app. But you can see that it found my prov underscore DTF. I'm gonna click it. And now it's asking for that proof of possession pin. Again, that is this value right here that you are free to change. I just left it as the default, ABCD1234. And this whole time, just note, 
the app is still looping. It's just waiting for credentials, waiting for credentials. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit next in the app. It's gonna say connecting to device. And now you'll see a little bit of log entries here saying it's, it's working. And now I'm gonna pick my IoT device. My joke password is Juicero2. And then I'm gonna click uh, provision. Let me just make sure I type that right. Juicero2, great. I'm going to click provision. And then you'll get some feedback here. You'll see all the log. It's saying, hey, I found your Wi-Fi SSID. I got a provision successful. And now you can see it says connected to Wi-Fi and ready to run main application. So now I am running this block of code over and over. You can see in the app, it just gives you check marks. I'm gonna hit okay. Take me back there. Perfect. That's it. My device is connected to my Wi-Fi. I was able to use an app. It's a much simpler process, especially for non-technical consumers to provision a device that you're working on over, over an app versus the soft AP approach where they have to connect to a Wi-Fi network that's special to the SP32 and, and go through that. Um, I found in our experience much easier for customers to do this approach. The app for both Apple and Android are open source from Espresso, so you can actually clone those and modify them to um, theme them to your business or project. Um, and so they, there's a lot of resources to get you started there, but this is just how you would do that. And one thing I would like to illustrate really quick, I'm going to press the reset button. And so the next time this boots up, it's still gonna to try to run the provisioning code, but it will see right away that it has all of that figured out and it's gonna to skip to just the running part. So let's see that here. I'm gonna go ahead and let go. It's gonna reboot. You'll see the output down here. It's gonna go through, it's gonna connect, get an IP address. And then you can see the first thing that we get when we go through the loop. Well, sorry, we did get one waiting for Wi-Fi credentials, open app to get started right here but immediately it connects through the provisioning code ends and you jump right into connected to Wi-Fi and ready to run main application. So even after reboots, you're provisioned and ready to go. And so your code will be just fine. Some things to note, I can make a change here and reflash the credentials will stay. So if I make a code change in my project and then I run flash monitor again, it will still be provisioned. If you need to unprovision it for things like testing, um, the easiest way is just to do that ESP tool, erase flash, that'll wipe the whole thing. You can program it fresh and you'll be good to go. So uh, that is going to do it for this video. If you have any questions, please reach out. You can reach us at support at deploythefleet.io or leave a comment on this video. Happy to help you get up and running with your ESP32 project. Thanks again and have a wonderful day.